is the only setup you need to create high quality videos at an affordable price. Let's go! Good morning, beautiful people. Today is super exciting because I'm about to share with you my gear setup for the complete list of things that you need to get started as a blogger. I know some of you guys are thinking, who is this idiot sharing her advice? I agree. If you're like me, just trying to figure shit out, then I think this video is going to be super helpful for you. For those of you that know me, you know that I'm a gearhead. Gearhead. So when I was pregnant, I was the mom that everybody went to to ask for what to buy, what to wear, where you buy things, what's the best convertible stroller, you know. The reason why people become gearheads, it's because they hate inefficiency. If I can find a way to do something even 3% better, then I would get that thing. So eventually, I always get my setup down to the bare essence because I want to be like a ninja. <laughs> When I decided to make YouTube videos quite seriously, I had applied that same search for perfection and efficiency and applied to research my gear. I am not a professional camera person. There are tons of camera reviews out there that you can follow with the specs. That is not what I'm good at doing. What I'm world class at doing is bitching. If something's not working well, you will hear from me. What I'm also world-class at doing is being both lazy and critical at the same time. I want the maximum highest quality output for the least amount of work possible. I also have extremely high standards for the products that I put out. Primary criteria for all of my gear, portability. I know myself, and that probably applies to most of you, but me as a girl <laughs> who's lazy and busy and not so strong, a camera that weighs even 100 grams more will make me that much less likely to pick it up when I go do a thing. So I want a setup that will stay with me through the day. I wouldn't feel the stress of having any of those gear on me. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's actually time for the great review now, okay? Here is our... Sony ZV-1 that I'm recording on right now. It makes it so easy to make beautiful videos that I just spend zero mindshare trying to figure out how to film. So I'm gonna go through the list of feature by order of importance for why I chose the Sony ZV-1 and why it is the perfect camera for me and maybe for you. The flip out screen. It is absolutely critical as a vlogger that you have a flip out screen. Believe it or not, I had a Canon, I had a Canon Mark III 5D. Oh, look at this beast. Okay, it is a professional grade camera. This thing came out a few years ago and was selling for 4,000 US dollars and not even with, and this is not even the kit lens. I got it secondhand from a friend for maybe like $800, but I'm not able to vlog with this at all. It does not have a flip out screen. I can't do this. Well, first it's ginormous. I can't do this and then go check like, was that in frame? No, I don't have time for that. I want one take and this is the one take that is going into that shot and needs to be perfect. It needs to be done, right? So that flip out screen, it's, it's absolutely critical. And it's one of Sony's first product to have a sight flip out. Smart autofocus. This camera is so fast. I'm always in focus and it has a product showcase mode that allows me to do you see how fast it is? Ding, 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 ding. If I'm doing like food videos, oh, you wanna see what I'm drinking? Oh, right here, boom. Like, oh, what's my phone? Boom. No thinking involved, it's done. It's got a beautiful depth of field. So they have this function called background defocus with one button. There's a dedicated button for it and watch press and it's turned on, it's defocused. Go watch the rest of my videos. You will be blown away. I have comparison videos. This is the Leica Q, okay? This should cost about 7,000, five, no, 5,000 US dollars, 7,000 sing. It's not mine, it's my friend. 
thank you it takes beautiful beautiful pictures so if you have money to spend you can spend it on this but i don't so then i'm just borrowing it like it has the most gorgeous bouquet okay but it costs so much money and it's so much heavier and it doesn't have the flip out screen so what i'm saying is for vlogging purposes this is good enough this doesn't get talked about enough, maybe because camera review guys are all guys, but it makes me look beautiful. So there are some cameras that will just make you look like I don't want that. I want to look decently put together. This camera makes me look good. Some cameras make you look ugly. For example, the DJI Osmo Pocket. I love it, it's small, it's cheap, it's gimbal stabilized, but it has no flip out screen, it does not autofocus fast enough, and it makes me look terrible. Every time I look at the footage, it's pretty much unusable because I'm like, I cannot appear on camera looking like shit. And Sony does something amazing. First, it just looks good. Second, it has beautification built in if you want your skin to look a little bit better and sometimes we need it okay so sold take my money already this camera is lightweight and tiny it's compact it weighs just 300 grams which any girl can handle for a full day it is a compact camera it is not a dslr or a mirrorless now it's not as tiny as this but this has its flaws it is way lighter than something like this the dslr the canon Okay. The Canon 5D Mark III with the lens about 1.5 kilograms, 1500 grams. I mean, I, I'm literally doing weights with this thing. It's just not going to fly, okay? Even the Leica, which is fairly, fairly compact for full frame, is still hefty, you know? It's, it still weighs something. It comes with a very decent built-in mic and they even give you the dead cat. But right here, I'm showing you the built-in audio with the dead cat as it comes out of the box. Completely usable. If it's at home, it's in a quiet environment with reasonable acoustics, this baby is perfectly good enough for that. Now, this is very important for those of us who want to catch like beautiful looking B-roll. So I learned that the only trick to doing that is to basically shoot everything in slow-mo. So if normal frame rate is about 24 frames per second, then anything close to about 100 frames per second will allow you to slow down two times and four times. Your, your footage will look buttery smooth and give that feeling of professional high quality work. seems to be a more and more common technology you know a lot of the sony cameras have this the high frame rate uh, this one actually goes up to 960 frames but you won't necessarily need to use that canon does not again let's bring out the sponsor right it shoots amazingly but video only goes up to 50 frames per second this product is a few years old so it's not really a fair comparison but my most recent one was the the one i borrowed from the nas academy and it was canon eos that has a flip out screen, it's perfect entry level DSLR. However, it only shoots up to 50 frames per second. Do not do slow mo, it will not give you that buttery smooth B row. But my tiny, 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 tiny Sony will. So these are all the seven reasons, seven, seven, seven reasons why Sony ZV1 is the perfect vlogging camera. You need to get started to make content. Okay guys, so our second most important piece of gear is the tripod. And the reason why we absolutely need it is, well, for those of us who have no friend, 99% of the time we will be filming alone, as I have done. No, but honestly, we'll be filming ourselves. That's the truth of life. And you know what? I kind of enjoy doing that. It gives me so much flexibility. And all it relies on is a good tripod. Remember my number one criteria for gear, portability. Weight is so important. I cannot carry a professional camera tripod that is big and heavy because I will, I would just not do it. I would give up. I would recommend this setup. DJI, but I think they've discontinued this product. However, there are very many similar products out there and I need to show you why this works, okay? This 
this tripod from DJI. Number one, it is very stable. And number two, it opens out very quickly. D. This allows it to be extra stable. And a turn releases it. And it extends all the way. This is the furthest it goes. Initially, when I was shopping for tripods for this, it felt like a deal breaker to me because I thought I needed something that's at eye level like this so I can talk to the audience. But then I realized when I'm out shooting, I don't have these scenes very often. So like if I'm at a coffee shop or, you know, shooting at a grocery store or whatever, right? Like there's usually ledges and shelves that I can rest this camera on and do a pretty good speaking shot. Like you need to film. Oh, you ready to film. The reason why I end up recommending this is actually really because it detaches. That is very important because I want it to go in my bag. And I know a lot of camera bags will have straps at the bottom, but having straps is not the fastest way to use it, okay? Look, I detach it. Now it's two smaller handhelds that can go into a lot of potential places, right? A lot of bags will be able to fit this. And so after it's broken down, this DJI piece right here, the bottom base will actually serve as a very decent tripod base and it will extend your grip slightly. However, to use it effectively as a selfie stick, you need something with a ball bearing that will, or at least a two way axis for the camera to turn back towards you. Ulanzi MT14. I highly recommend this as a mini handheld tripod setup. Check out this tripod. It extends this way. Look at that. And it has this built-in little snap here that you just press and it goes back. Amazing, guys. I know I said it came with an amazing built-in mic, but as a lot of you know, audio is one of the most important aspects of storytelling. So there are a lot of instances outside with poor acoustics when there's a lot of wind where you might want to have better audio. And for very little money, you can really increase your, your audio quality by 30 to 50%. So I recommend the Siren VMQ-1. Now we're back on Sony's original audio. The Siren VMQ-1 is a small directional mic like this that plugs in directly to your camera and it does not need an additional battery to run it. So it does drain your camera's battery, but I much prefer that because I always charge my camera and it, you don't have to turn it on and off, which is critical. Oh my God, I had one that I have to keep turning on and I kept forgetting to do that and that is the most frustrating thing ever. So it just plugs right in. It comes with this ginormous dead cat. So cute. Doesn't it just actually why do you call it dead cat? It shouldn't be dead mouse. Maybe you don't like mouse. Okay well then it props onto this thing. Plug it into your heart shoe and you're good to go. This thing cost me 35 sing dollars, which is what, 25 USD. And you know, I've been shooting most of this video using this. Actually, most of my other videos, if you wanna go check out the quality of those. We have our camera, tripod, mic. What else do we need? We need something to carry all that shit with. And actually for about a week, I was just using like random backpacks and like my tote bag, you know. It doesn't really work because I scratch up my cameras and things just like float around in the bag. I really need a messenger camera bag, okay, to allow me to go on bikes, to be on my Segway, to take my kid with me. So after much research, I found the perfect bag. Tears in my eyes when I think about how perfect it is. If you guys have searched for camera bags, you know how ugly they look. But thank God there is a company that does something different and it's called Peak Design. And this is the bag that I recommend to everybody. Ta -da! The Peak Design Everyday Sling Bag V2, six liters. Look at the form factor on this thing. It is beautiful. It does not look like a camera bag. I could be in stealth mode. I could just be a cool person, right? And the six liters fits perfectly on a 1.63 centimeter, 60 kilogram girl. 
That's right, full disclosure. I don't mind sharing with you my weight. This six liter is what I recommend for girls like me and anybody who got my setup because it fits perfect. This blew my mind, but it allows me to edit on the go. Why? Because I can fit my computer in it. My 2017 12 inch MacBook Air fits in this thing. This is what sold me. Okay, I will now show you how it's done. And there is the sleeve. So I've done this a few times already. So it's slightly more pliable, you know? There's a fat end and there's a thin end. We wanna put the fat end in first, okay? Because why? You gotta make room for the biggest shit first, right? Okay, Ooh. okay. Now it's almost in. What we need to do is just fucking use. I'm kidding. Oh, actually it doesn't, not that much strength, see? I popped it in. And now I'm gonna pop the other end in. Little bit of practice. Ha! Ah! Oh! It's in. My computer is in my bag. Now I can really just go anywhere. I can just film, shoot, edit on the spot, get it up on YouTube, and I'm ready to go. Then now, of course, you have your origami internal compart compartments that come off and you can move and shift as you need, but I usually keep these two in here. Okay guys, that's all my gear, and this is the list of prices for all of them. The Sony ZV-1 goes for $700. The Siren VMQ-1 goes for about 20 US dollars. The stands, which may not be available, that will be variable pricing in your uh, country. The Peak Design Everyday Sling V2 bag that I bought for $100 and 50 sing dollars, but there's also a link here. <laughs> so for around a thousand US dollars, you're ready to shoot. Happy shooting, you guys. <laughs> shooting that was really tiring. Oh, hey guys, so if you like that video, please subscribe. 